Hi, my name is Axel Carolyn, and I'm going to talk about Ghostbusters. Um, the original Ghostbusters, or as we call it now, the all-male Ghostbusters, came out in 1984, and I was a little girl at the time. Like, I never heard about it until the sequel came out, and the film was on TV, and my parents were very strict when it came to what movies I could watch. So, um, but I had a cousin who was two years older, so he was much cooler than I was. So he would tell me about all the great films, and he would sometimes get my, my grandma to tape them on VHS. And so I would watch all those films that I couldn't watch at home. I would watch them with my grandma, like Bruce Lee and all that stuff. Like, Dad, if you're listening to me, do not be too hard on grandma. Um, and one night she recorded Ghostbusters, which I'd never heard of at the time. And she showed it to me. And it was just, I went crazy over that movie. Suddenly I had all the toys and I started watching it so many times. I knew it completely by heart in French. And then I learned... Um, I bought a tape in English that was subtitled in English, so I started learning English by watching Ghostbusters. That's how obsessed I was. I've never had the chance in my life to talk about a class 5 free-roaming vapor ghost, but um, that's one of the first expressions that I learned in English. So, um, you know how people say that it's a phase and it'll pass and children will not always be obsessed with America and ghosts and movies? Well, in this case, I kind of was. So the first thing that struck me when I watched this trailer was that the first 30 seconds don't make it obvious that it's a comedy. And obviously everybody knows that it's supposed to be funny, but when I first watched it as a little girl, I didn't see the, that it was funny at all. I saw this as pretty scary, and especially the beginning here with the librarian. The movie itself kind of has this thin line between what's a little bit too extreme for children and what isn't. So here, the library ghost, for example, had a much more scary puppet originally, which was not used and was later used in Fright Night. But the side of Ghostbusters that I loved at the time was the ghosts. I was really pleased when I heard that the story came from Dan Aykroyd's dad, who was completely obsessed with ghosts. And so he used to have seance in his basement when he was a kid. And he wrote a book about it in 2009 that's called A History of Ghosts, which I've, of course, read. And he talks about all those family experiences, which must have inspired Dan Aykroyd, who wanted to write this because he, he believes in ghosts. And he thought it would be a great idea if someday he opened the yellow pages and he saw an ad that says, we believe you, because he's surrounded with skeptics. And there's a lot of stuff in the film that's kind of... Interesting because a lot of ghost lore that you don't really see in other ghost movies, like the ectoplasm, for example, which is the substance that exudes from the body of a medium and from which the spirits manifest. It's essentially the fabric of which the spirits are made. And in 19th century photos, you can see psychics with this kind of weird substance that comes out of their mouth. And it's actually cheesecloth on those photos, which is kind of weird. But yeah, it's one of the few films I can think of that uses that. There's a scene towards the end that's set in a jail, and it was shot in real jail, and apparently he claimed that it was completely haunted for real. So I love the fact that it's always been kind of on the surface, that the, the ghost, although completely goofy, or something that he believes in. Another source of inspiration for him, which I was familiar with when I was a kid, was the cartoon that Disney made, which was called Lo Lonesome Ghosts. And it even has Goofy say, I am afraid of no ghosts at some point, so it's kind of very directly inspired here. There's a bunch of like bumbling ghostbusters going after ghosts. But um, here we go. Ghostbusters. We came, we saw, we kicked it. 